I can very confidently say that I am pretty much the best Sona player that I've ever seen. And you can look up here. I have a 69.3% win rate overall on Sona. And that was when I, you know, when I started to learn Sona as well. As you can see, now it's closer to 80% win rate. And like, every game is a free win. That's what I want to say with Sona. Except for like, I would say 5% of the games, depending on the draft. And then the other 15% that I've lost is because of people trolling. Literally every game is a free win. So I'm going to explain to you guys about all of that during the gameplay. But first I'm going to explain to you guys how to build Sona. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of curious. What do people even build on Sona? Because like, you know, like, what is this? Okay, interesting. What the hell is that? Ardent sensor. Okay, so it seems like people kind of agree with me, but like I didn't really look at the top builds anyway. So this is the way you build Sona. Listen carefully. You start with a spectral sickle. You do not go for relic shield. I see some Sona players go for relic shield. Don't go for relic shield. You don't need relic shield. Spectral Circle is much, much better because you know what's funny? Like, of course, the damage is great, but Spectral Circle actually also makes you tankier as well. Like, perhaps even as close as, uh, as, close as much as... Well, that's really bad English, but it almost makes you as tanky as the Relic Shield does because Relic Shield will give you 200 max health, uh, the maximum one, 200 max health, but Relic Shield will give you ability power. It gives you 40 ability power, the maximum upgraded Relic Shield. Uh, let me quickly look to make sure. Yeah, 40 ability power. So, your second ability is going to be much stronger, which means you're going to heal yourself more and you're going to give yourself a bigger barrier. So, you are literally going to be tankier if you get Spectral Circle, as well as you do more damage, as well as you're going to make your team tankier. So, never, ever, ever go for Relic Shield. I see some, I even see some really, like, high-level Sona players do it. Never do it. First item, Tear of Goddess, after the Spectral Circle, just build a Tear of Goddess, stack it up as fast as you can, you know, just spam your abilities, you have to go for this first. Don't finish the Archangel Staff, not worth it, instead, finish off the Staff of Flowing Water. Every time you're healing your team, you're not only just healing and shielding them, you're also giving them 15 ability haste and a lot of ability power constantly, through, like constantly, constantly, because you give it to them for 6 seconds. Even at level 1, I believe Sona's second ability is like close to 6 second cooldown. So essentially, you are continuously giving your team 15 ability haste and 20 to 40 ability power. Continuously, all the time. So that's why you want to get this item as fast as you can, as fast as you can. So second item is going to be an Archangel Staff. When you finish this, it should very soon go into Seraph's Embrace. It gives you more, it basically gives you infinite mana. That's not true, by the way. It gives you a lot of mana, not infinite at all. Like, actually not at all. But it gives you a lot of mana, a lot of ability haste. And honestly, most importantly, the lifeline. I would honestly say the lifeline is the most important. Because if you do get caught, Sona is insanely squishy. However, the lifeline gives you that 35% health shield, which is pretty massive. And it also consumes your mana to give you an even bigger shield, which is really, really good. Like, it's insane. Or sorry, it consumes your mana. And that's what I wanted to say. It consumes 15% of your mana and gives you a shield, which is insane. And you know why it's absolutely insane? Because generally, you know, you're generally going to use this item when you get caught out. So like, you know, the enemy, the enemy catches you out and you're going to have full mana. You're essentially, you're probably going to have around 3,000, 3,500 mana when you finish this item. So 15% of 3,000 is a shield of like 450. You're going to get a shield of 450 health plus 100, so 550 health. Which is an insanely good shield, of course. It allows you to tank up a lot. So third item, here it becomes completely situational. Let me explain. This is actually still quite important. If the enemies have champions that are very fast and like you can really kite them with movement speed, you go for the Cosmic Drive. This one is the best, by the way, generally, because it also gives you 30 ability haste. Does the enemy have a lot of burst damage or does your team have a lot of burst damage? Essentially, is the game all about burst? That's when you go for Rabadon's Death Cap. This one is going to give you the most ultimate damage, the most first ability damage, the biggest burst, healing and shielding. It's all about the burst. You know what I mean? Is your ADC very good? Or is your kill top lane very good? Or is your Jax jungle very good? Is your attack damage type of champions in your team good? Are they good? Then you go for the Ardent Sensor third item. Essentially, with an Ardent Sensor, you're sacrificing a lot of power to give more to your team. You're sacrificing yourself to give to your team, but only to the strong attack damage types of champions that can really utilize the attack speed and the bonus damage that their attacks get. 
And then you basically get these items. If you don't want to build an Ardent Sensor, by the way, you can go for Harmonic Echo. Harmonic Echo is a bit of an overkill. So generally, I go for Lich Bane. Uh, I've, I haven't really seen many Lissonas do this, but like last item, you know, if you have no idea what to build and you don't want a Harmonic Echo, you go Lich Bane and you're going to destroy the enemy. You're going to do an insane amount of damage. And there is another type of build that Sona can go, which is third item Rabadon's Death Cap. And then fourth item Lich Bane. So not fifth item, Lich Bane, fourth item. Go for this. If the enemy has a very squishy background, like a Zix, like a Caitlyn, you know, long range champions, because then you can destroy them as a Sona. For the enchantment, uh, for the boots, you go for Ernie Boots of Lucidity. Uh, some games you go for Mercury Sets. If you're against like an Annie or something, Annie is the only counter to Sona, by the way. Like in the whole game, pretty much Annie is the only counter. You go for Mercury Threats. Like if the enemy has a lot of CC, Mercury Threats are great. For the enchantment, I don't care about Redemption. I don't care about Mercury's Locket. I don't care about Protect Enchant. I don't care about Meteor. I don't care about any one of them. Except for Stasis. Every single game you go for Stasis. I don't care what you have to say. You go for Stasis. You want the high win rate on Sona? You go for Stasis. You better get good at Stasis. Because Stasis allows you to not get caught. Let's say, for example, Vi is ulting you. Or Malphite is ulting you. You click Stasis. And you stop it. Let's say Rengar is going on you, you click Stasis. You know, Quasix is jumping you, you click Stasis. Varus ulted you, you click Stasis. Lux rooted you, you use Stasis. There's many, many more examples. These are just out of the top of my head. There are so many examples of, you You know, you can get caught by uh, as a Sona. Even if you think you're safe, you can still get caught. Because, for example, the enemy Varus could flash ult you. There is no counter to that really. But there is. Just stasis, right? So all stasis solves 99% of your problems. <laughs> for the runes, um, here you can go for Ari or Phase Rush. Ah, uh, Phase Rush. So okay, Phase Rush is weaker early game, but stronger late game. Um, Ari is stronger early game and stronger in late game if you wanna have burst, because it does more damage and it gives more shielding. So that's the difference. Ari is stronger early game and stronger if you go for the Rabadon's Death Cap build. Phase Rush is weaker early game, but stronger late game. It gives you more mobility, allows you to catch up to the enemy, and it allows you to catch up to your team. And you can't get slowed as much, because when you activate the Phase Rush, you're going to have slow resist as well. Second rune, always a Gathering Storm. Always, because you're stacking up Gathering Storm. Third rune, Conditioning. You want to take the risk by going Conditioning, because this makes you quite tanky late game, like... This one, plus the Seraph's Embrace, is really going to make it hard for the enemies to one-shot you. And that's really what you're trying to get. To. So, like, you know, conditioning is going to give you a lot of armor and magic resist. Plus the Seraph's Embrace, which gives you a shield. That's really good. And to increase the shield even further, you go for Mana Flow Band. You already have enough ability haste as a Sona. You just want mana. Because more mana means more damage, and more mana means a bigger shield. And more mana is good in the earlier stages of the game, when you don't have the Seraph's Embrace yet. For the spells, I actually always go for Ignite and Flash. I see some Sona players go for, you know, a heal. Of course, you don't really need a heal. It's only really better in the early game, the heal, because it allows you to have that bonus healing in the early game. But I love Ignite. I love Ignite. It allows you to be more aggressive. It allows you to shut down enemy champions that are healing a lot during team fights. allows you to finish off enemies with the Ignite. So that is it about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. That was a really long build part, but I honestly, honestly, guys... I want to make sure that my viewers are going to get into high elos. Cause, uh, and this video is probably going to break the meta again. Because last time I made a Sona video, I, so many people were playing Sona in my games. Because this champion is just broken. Like, it's unbelievably broken. But for some reason, no one plays her. Literally no one plays her. I had a Sona in my team earlier today. Oh my god. She actually motivated me to make this video. How bad... How unbelievably bad she was. You know, you know what she did? And now I'm going to talk about the first mistake you make as a Sony. You know what she did? She over, she basically got close to the enemy and they had like a pike or something. Pike just hooked her and they got first blood on her. Then she did it again. Essentially, Sona is actually pretty good into champions like, like uh, Thrash. You know, uh, Pike is a bit of a questionable one because he can get Serpent Fang. But as long as you just avoid the hook, make sure you maintain a distance. Like here... This is risky what I'm doing. Look, I am making a mistake because if Pike was smart, he could have actually hooked the bush blindly. He would have hooked me and they would have just killed me. They would have actually straight up killed me. So I am making a pretty big mistake here by doing this. And this game is going to be a really good example of Sona because there's a lot of games that I just win for free. I'm not going to show you guys those. I mean, 
Like as I, I, I literally win like 8 out of 10 Sona games. So I'm not going to show you the easy ones. But sometimes it gets hard, right? And you know what's funny? Often the losses are lost because of trolls. Um, and this one particular game is like the in-between. You'll see. You'll see. What, I was, what, what did I want to talk about? So let's first talk about the draft. Okay, like what is the ideal draft to pick Sona? Because this is important because basically if you pick Sona in the right draft, it is a free win. 99%. I'm not even kidding. 99%. But if you pick Sona every game, I would say it's like a 70-80% win. So let's talk about the 99%. First, what types of teammates do you want to have? Thanks. Tanks and bruisers. Bruisers are even better than tanks. Let me explain. Champions like Darius, Riven, Fiora, Garen, Wukong. You know, these champions are so good with Sona Scion, you know. Urgot. These champions that do decent damage and are decently tanky. Because you are going to make them unkillable. And they're not going to be, you know, potatoes. Because, for example, if you pick it with only tanks, you know, like only Ramis, only Garen, only only Alistar and stuff like that. It, it is still strong, don't get me wrong, but like the, there is counterplay to that, you know, like an enemy vein or something. There is counterplay. But if you pick bruisers, it doesn't matter that the enemy has a vein. And now let me explain to you guys why it doesn't matter. Because Sona has the exhaust passive. This is something not many people talk about too much. Because a lot of people think Sona is just the brain that support champion. That all she does is healing, no barriering. Oh, I got caught. I need to flash out. Yep. This is the problem with Sona, but we'll talk about it later. But what I was talking about is you can exhaust the enemy. Essentially. Oh, what the hell? Nice. Essentially, when you use your second ability lastly, and the bar becomes green, um, and you basic attack an enemy. So now, now I basic attack the enemy misfortune. I, I, uh, I make her do less damage for the next three seconds. This is unbelievably powerful. This is really good against champions like um, Katarina, Diana, Cannon, you know, any type of champion that heavily relies on like quickly doing damage or vain. Like let's say Katarina goes in with her ultimate. You can exhaust her. Well, exhaust her with the second ability. And it's gonna it's literally gonna reduce her damage by like 20 to 50%. It's even like 65% late game with a baron. I, I'm not even kidding. So like this is a crazy thing that you need to utilize with Sona. Almost every time... Oh, I'm trying to catch him here. I have to be careful because Spike is ultimate. But here we should be able to kill the Misfortune. I can heal my Ezreal. There we go. And now he's dead as well. Perfect. So, um, you always want to use the Exhaust... Actually, 90% of the times you use Exhaust passive. You use the damaging passive to, like, poke the enemy. You know, you can poke the enemy with it. Um, even with poking, it is generally better to use the exhaust passive. You know why? Because let's say the enemy goes in after you poke. The exhaust passive only does a little bit less damage, but you're denying a powerful engage. Because if the enemy goes in, they're going to do much less damage because you've exhausted them. Now let's talk about the other one, the slowing one. You know, when you use your third ability and then a basic attack, the empowered one, you're going to slow the enemy. This one... You can use to catch out an enemy. Like if you're very ahead, for example, you can use it to catch an enemy. Or if you just want to slow an enemy that is running away, that's when you use that one. But if an enemy goes in, don't use that one. Generally, exhaust is going to be better. Very likely, exhaust is going to be better. So that's some very important thing to know about as well. Now let's talk about what you don't want to pick Sona into. Because um, like we're talking about the 99% draft, right? So, so you want to have bruisers with you. This draft... This draft is okay, because Yasuo is not necessarily a bruiser, but he's like a semi-tanky types of damage champion. Garen is amazing. And then Kill is okay, Ezreal is okay. So this is like an okay-ish draft. Like, I would give this game like an 85% chance to win, basically. So now let's talk about the enemy team. Ooh, I got caught. I got absolute... That Kill ultimate! Oh, that Kill ult was so good. So good! But yes, what don't you want to play against? You don't want to play against um, big burst types of champions that can catch you out. Let me elaborate. Annie is the biggest example, right? She protobelt, ults you, and you're dead. Another champion that really counters Sona is Jin. But Jin is such a weak champion that I don't consider him too much. But he does hard counter Sona. Like, I don't want to... I want to make sure you guys know that. Because 
If he goes for Storm Razor, for example, his basic attack will catch you. If he roots you, the enemy team can kill you. Sona cannot tank Jin's ultimate at all. And Jin can build a Serpent Fang, which hard counters your barrier. Um, full AP Malphite is perhaps a decent counter to Sona. Um, if you're able to dodge his ultimate, he's going to be absolutely useless. But, that, like, of course, he can one-shot you with his ultimate. So, basically, the counter to that is maintain a distance. Because if you maintain a distance from the AP Malphite, he has to flash ult you. And if he flash ults you, it's very easy to block. I know just Malphite ultimate is hard to block. But if he flashes and then ults you, you know, if you have a little bit of a good reaction, it should be fairly simple to, to block. Besides that... Morgana, and you know what, Morgana really doesn't counter Sona, a lot of people say it, but she really doesn't, Brand, Brand doesn't really either, because even if they go anti-healing, sure, you know, let's say sure, they go anti-healing, you still, 80% of the value you provide is the barrier, I'm not sure if you guys realize that, but 80% of the value is the barrier, so like, oh, Singed actually kind of counters Sona, because of course he has anti-heal, but he can also catch you out. He can use his second ability on top of you, flash Protobell towards you, and throw you backwards. So Singed is a decent counter to Sona as well, but yet again, it really, it's not a game change. It's not a game breaker. Only Annie is. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Only if the enemy picks a good Annie, I would then consider your win rate to be like, probably like around 50% chance, and that's really not good with Sona. Because avoiding an Annie is essentially impossible. Even if you go QSS, she's probably still gonna one-shot you. So, just don't pick Sona into Annie. That, that's that's my that's my drafting tip for you guys. Just don't pick into Annie, and you should be A-OK. -okay. Um, so, early game playing Sona, you just want to bully the enemy with your first ability. Don't get too close, don't stay too far, use your first ability. At level 3, you don't take your third ability, you actually put another point in your second ability. This is to heal your ally better and give a better barrier. To survive your lane. So like as a Sona you want to survive your lane. It's not necessarily about winning. Oh what a beautiful engage by the way. But it's not necessarily about winning your lane. It's about surviving your lane. Right here you can see I'm using the slowing one. Because we're possibly catching out to Diana. So I'm slowing her with my third ability. And I'm buffing my teammates movement speed of course. So they can catch them a little bit easier too. Remember I have a stasis. So I'm kind of trying to bait the Diana to go in. Look I'm kind of just... I'm kind of baiting her, but of course not making it too obvious. Like, look, you see? I, I, I stasised here because I thought she would go on to me, but she actually didn't. The reason that I stasised earlier is because she can absolutely one-shot me. Like, I, I wouldn't have enough time if she instantly jumped on me. Honestly, it was a nice try, but... Yeah. And regarding the skin giveaway, uh, I messaged them about my PC. They actually said they repaired my PC and that I, sh that I could expect it tomorrow. I could expect my PC tomorrow. So then I'm going to pick the three winners from March. For this month, I'm doing, of course, another skin giveaway, giving away three more skins. All you have to do is put down a comment under the video and on the other videos in April to increase your chances. And make sure you give the video a like as well. It really supports the channel and stuff. And, you know, if you want to do that, of course, it's very sweet. So, Sona mid game. Here it starts to get fun. And I call level 9 mid game because that's when you put another point in your ultimate. Because here you'll have, you can use your abilities fairly often. Like, you, the cooldowns are going to be very, very low. Like, you know, you can constantly heal, constantly buff movements, we constantly do damage. What the hell is Yasuo doing? Yeah. Level 13, you should pretty much win the game. But level 9, look, exhaust, stun. You see? I exhausted her, and then I stunned her. You need to stay calm. Ooh, he got caught. He got caught. I mean... Okay. If he doesn't die, I can heal him. Exhausting Diana. So, like, Diana does zero damage now, you see? If you actually closely pay attention to what I'm doing... Look, exhausting the Darius... If you closely, closely pay attention to what I'm doing, you can see that I'm exhausting the enemies constantly. And this is only at level 9. At level 13, Sona does get harder to play. Because, like, look, exhausted the Darius again, you see? Because at level 13, it's quite hard to manage the exhausting and to manage your abilities properly. Because you have to spam the hell out of your abilities and also use your passive constantly. Constantly basic attack the enemy. Don't just run around like an idiot healing your team and, and just spamming your abilities like thinking... Don't go around thinking that that is enough, because that is not enough. You know, it may it may give you like a, maybe like a 52-53% win rate in Sona, but what really ramps up the win rate to like 60 plus percent win rate, perhaps even 70%, is knowing how to use your passive and using it on an important target constantly. 
Another small thing. Okay, he's just kind of caught. I did give him the heal, but he's caught. I don't have mana. Another small little important thing you really need to know uh, how to do on Sona um, is flash comboing your ultimate. Because this can allow you to really get some good ultimates. Like, you know, this is going to get you like the three, four, even five man ultimates that the enemies will never see coming. It is risky, of course, to do this because you're literally flashing into the enemy team. But if, if you have a very good engaging composition, like if you have a Diana or a Katarina in your team, for example, Flash ulting is a very powerful tool to, to initiate the team fight. Like, and the enemies will never see it coming. They're never going to think like Sona is going to flash ult us, you know, because Sona always wants to be safe. But if you just do the expected, they're going to get destroyed if you do it properly. Of course, you can only really do this if you have a stasis. Because, you know, you can't, you will, they will likely collapse on you when you flash ult. Because they know you don't have a flash anymore. By the way, I'm also playing with the best kill in Europe. I'm pretty sure this guy is the best kill. Because he has like a 60-67% kill win rate. He's challenger as well. Uh, I played duo with him a few times, like uh, two weeks ago or something. That's when I recorded this video too. I actually don't really re remember what happened in the late game. But like I always say, there's always a reason that I saved a gameplay video on my phone. There's always a reason. So it has to be good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ooh, Luxus. Ooh, they're both pushing. Uh, it's a little bit hard for me to take care of them. I stunned her. Exhausted. She's exhausted. I can slow, now she's slowed, and I stasis. See, look, look, it's perfect gameplay right here. This is, this is all, this was, this was all part of the plan. I did get caught, yes, but then I exhausted the misfortune so she wouldn't do any damage. And then I baited her, you know, I, I pretended that I overextended. You know, I did overextend, but I had a stasis. So I pretended, and then I stasis. And then she just died, because she went way too deep. I flashed away, easy peasy kill, you see? So you can bait very well with Sona's well, because you have Exhaust Passive, you have a Stun, you have Seraph's Embrace, you have Stasis, and you have a Flash. These are all tools that you can use at your disposal. Ooh, to be careful. But these are all tools at your disposal that you can use. I slowed him. There's not really much a Pike is going to do to him. I mean, I can stun him. Yeah, he's just dead. Easy. Yeah, I'm going Arden Sensor this game because the, the kill is, of course, a really good player. And because if you actually look at our team, everyone is really going to benefit from the Arden. They just straight up got the Baron, by the way. Oof. Damn. I kind of knew that they were doing it, but I couldn't do anything about it. Like, I'm just Sona. We don't have a single dragon, by the way. Wait, am I going Harmonic Echo? There's no way that I went Harmonic Echo. Please. May actually, you know what? Maybe I decided to go for Harmonic Echo this game because this is a really rough game and I need a power spike fast. So like, you know, Harmonic Echo is going to be 700 gold cheaper than Rabadon's Death Cap. So I could get the power spike a little bit earlier, which could be, you know, the game changer. So like, I, I was potentially building into a Harmonic Echo. And I don't think I actually got it though, I don't remember. Yeah, we just have to defend. Okay, that does a lot of damage, but she kind of wasted it. Now we should be a little bit safer here. Oh, I went for heal this game, actually. Interesting. Oh, no, not the kill getting caught. 730 damage right there from the misfortune. Oof. Oof. Oi, that one hurt it. That one hurt. Not hurt it. Hurt. For English, what the hell? Exhaust passive. Oh, 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 I have stasis. Good stasis right here. He got baited again, you see? And, oh, my laptop went off. Oops. Oh, they got every single turret. No, the bot lane turret is still alive. Oh, we need the bot lane turret. Don't give them the bot lane turret, please. If we give them the bot lane turret, it is 100% game over. I mean, the game is really not looking too nice now as well. Ah, oh, they're gonna get the third dragon. We're gonna be too late because Diana already started it. Oh, no. I mean, actually, it really doesn't matter. It's not like, it's not like the third dragon is going to be a difference. Because, I mean, look at our team comp. Look at our team comp. If we make it to the late game, I even think, like, even if we lose every single turret, if we make it to the late game, we win this game guaranteed. But the problem is, 
I'm level 13. I'm not 15 yet. And Kill is also, I think, level 13. Yeah, Kill is also level 13, which is not 15 yet. The good thing, however, is that the Baron is not up yet. You know, there's like two more minutes for us to farm up and until the next Baron. Kill, so Kill could reach level 15 in those two minutes. You know, I could get like a whole, like another item possibly. So I'm just kind of trying to farm as, you know, as much as we can right here. Yeah, as you can see, Kill as well, he's really trying to reach that level 15 power spike. We, should, we shouldn't really fight right now. Just farm. Just, just shove out the waves. Get as much golden experience as we can. And try to reach as high levels as possible before the next forced fight. Because the next Baron is definitely going to be a forced fight. And we shouldn't give the inhib to Diana. There's no way we should give an inhib to her. So hopefully my team can defend it. Yeah. Oh, Ezreal. No, we got caught. Oh, the Baron is spawning. No. All right. Let's see. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh. No, don't end. No. Okay, nice. We're still safe. Flash ult, but she actually flashed away. Oh, that's a nice Yasuo. Oh, that's a nice Yasuo combo, though. Now we should be okay again. Okay, I, I, I exhausted the... There you go. There you go. I exhausted the Diana, and she literally did zero damage to the kill. This is a full AP Diana, and her ult did zero damage. I stasis, however, just to make sure. I didn't want to take a risk here, so I just I just used stasis so I wouldn't die. So even though she was exhausted, I actually just, just used stasis just to make sure. So well, which item am I even going for? Cosmic Drive or what? Ooh, kill is level 15, but still, we have lost two inhibs. There's a Darius here. They... Oh, they took the Baron again. Oh god, okay, we actually have to fight. We Yeah, we have to fight. Like, we have to fight. Because we're, we're not going to be able to defend an 18-minute Baron right now. There's no way we can defend this Baron. So we just straight up have to fight. We 100% have to fight. So let's see what we actually do. Even if we win that fight, I'm not sure if we can even end the game. But, like, we, we really have to fight right now. Don't die. No. Come on. Nice. No, he died. At least we killed her. Oh, this is so risky. Oh, nice. We're all full HP, by the way, because I'm playing Sona. But we shouldn't fight. We need to kill this Darius. Oh, he took the turret. He took that turret as well. That is so tragic. They have three turrets now. Oh, they have, they're going to have so much pressure. So, so, so much pressure right now. Oh, come on, kill. I can give everyone so much movement speed by I mean, look at this. We can easily catch them because of the movement speed that I give. The third ability is so underrated as well. Like, in the later stages of the game, it gives you, like, a 25 to 30% movement speed boost to your entire team for 5 seconds upon casting it. So, a common misconception is that you need to maintain your third ability to maintain movement speed. This is not true. It is true that if you maintain your third ability, that allies stepping into it will get movement speed. However, when you activate the third ability, every single ally within the range is going to get the bonus movement speed for 5 seconds. So if, if your allies are close to you, you can just use the third ability and then instantly use another ability and your allies are going to be enjoying the movement speed for 5 seconds. So just, just a, a little bit of a tip. Because these are all things you need to know with Sona. So like, during a fight, you want to very quickly use your third ability and then instantly something else. Just use your third ability just for the sake of, you know, giving your teammate the movement speed. So like, right here, I should use my third ability. Let's see if I actually do it, because I'm saying it now. I, I didn't use it. I actually didn't play this one very well, but my kill did steal the Elder. So like, I didn't actually play this one fight very well. Actually, maybe I did it to manage my mana. Ah, uh, the inhib, the inhib, the inhib, the inhib, the inhib, guys, the inhib. No, no, the inhib. They're gonna get the mid, the stupid inhib. Oh, that one is never gonna respond. Oh, this game, this game got so hard on my nerves. It was a crazy, stupid game. Oh, we lost the top lane inhib forever now. We do have the mid lane one though, but. The bot lane one is spawning sometime soon, but it's gonna take a while. 
Why am I pushing? Oh, I have the Elder Dragon, so I can push it very fast. Ooh, that's a Rabadon's Death Cap, by the way, guys. Like, I'm level 15 with a Rabadon, with four items, including a Rabadon's Death Cap. Honestly, even though they have, like, two in hips, I would say this should be a free win now. Let's actually look at what happens, but, like, honestly, even though we're losing this game and we still haven't really won a fight, this should be an, the easiest fight of our lives. So I'm curious to see how the next fight goes, because I don't actually remember if we won or lost this game. Let's see. I mean, surely, surely I'm just going to destroy them. Surely. Like, me and Kill could probably 2v5 now. Nah, okay, let, let's just see what happens. I'm talking a lot, but let's actually just see what happens. That, that's the movement speed, by the way. Look at how fast we both are. It's, it's so funny. I mean, Misfortune is just no damage. Zero. Ooh, be careful of getting caught. Yeah, I'm just I'm just po procking the bone plating right there. <gasps> if I got caught, I would have had the stasis right there. But I would have been alive. Like, I wouldn't have died. So Elder just ran out, by the way. Kinda sucks. We should have forced fun. Oh! He tried to catch me. He tried to catch me, but he didn't get me. Even as a serpent fang, but it doesn't matter because I'm level 15 Sona. A blue buff would be very good. I mean, she's like, look at how much damage. Look at how much damage we do. Misfortune is doing zero damage. Her ult does nothing towards us. Like, look, no one of the enemies is really doing anything anymore. Look, literally no one. Oh, stasis. There you go. I would have died without the stasis, you see? And we're back to full HP. I think I kind of wanted to go back for the Darius, but then I realized that I can just stay and we can just end the game. I mean, look at that, guys. If that doesn't show you how broken Sona is, then nothing does. I showed you my win rates. Now you just have to believe it and play her yourself. And you'll realize it as well. How unbelievably broken this champ is. The most broken champion in the game. Easily. Like, easily. Just take a look at how much damage we did. I did 18,000 damage, uh, but I did an insane amount of healing. Do I show how much healing I did? No, I didn't. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really, I know you guys enjoyed this one. I come on, like I know you guys enjoyed this one, but yes, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye bye.